Just like the arteries and veins in our body, most of the water system is hidden beneath the surface. We only know it's there thanks to a few mysterious buildings whose purpose we can only guess. We're standing on one of them now. We're at the top of a tower on Djevin Hill, on the left bank of the Voltava River, at a place poetically called the Maiden's Castles. So what do you think this building is? An observation tower? Uh-uh. A transmitter? No. It's a water tower. Yes, really. But what does it do? I won't keep you in suspense. This elegant structure absorbs the pressure waves which the pumps make as they push water through the pipes. Now you know that, let's go and look at this beauty from a different perspective. I'll stay here, and you can go for a flight. Nice view, right? Way over there, by the flag, is the Yesenitsa Reservoir. Water flows into it through a tunnel from the Jalifka water treatment plant, and then out of it in pipes that circle all the way around to the north of Prague. The water supply network is huge, so obviously the pressure in it swings around sometimes. And that's a problem. How can I explain it? Well, imagine it like a little tsunami wave that happens in the pipeline. If we just let its power go, it could do incredible damage to the pipes and any connected equipment. That's why our tower is here, on a hill above Prague. It acts like a kind of enormous expansion tank. It's made of three 50-meter-high connected steel tubes, each with a diameter of 1.8 meters. So, if there's a sudden pressure wave down there in the pipes, then phew! All of its power is safely absorbed up in here. We've explained what this monumental building is for, but since we're up here, we might as well look around a bit more. On the horizon, we can see the two ways that drinking water flows in from Karani, one to the Flora Reservoir and the other to the north of Prague. Down by the Voltava, we all know the Potterly Waterworks. Do you see that blue flag on the horizon? That's the Kopanina Reservoir, which we also fill up all the way from the Zhilivka River. And Kopanina is where we'll be headed next. Drinking water is pumped into Prague's supply system from three treatment plants, Zhilivka, Karani, and Podoli. First, large diameter pipes called primary feeders carry it to reservoirs. We're standing in one of them now. These reservoirs are spread out so we have enough water around to supply the whole city and to make sure we balance... what? Of course, the pressure in the system. The main thing that reservoirs do is balance out the regular inflow of water and the very irregular offtake of water across the city. They handle that job smoothly by their water level rising and falling. The drinking water from the treatment plants gets mixed in different parts of Prague. In some places you drink from just one source, in others from two, and in others from all three of the sources. But I'm sure none of us notices it. Water is processed with a lot of care and skill, and its quality is constantly monitored by Waterworks employees, who of course are helped by control systems with information from hundreds of sensors and detectors. There are tens of sensors and a local control system here too, in the pumping station next to the reservoir. This is where the power comes from, to push the pressure high enough to force the water through the pipes to your home connections. So, that's the pumping stations. Some have got some really big and powerful pumps that can push through thousands of liters of water every minute. How many are there? In the Greater Prague area, there are 69 reservoirs and 51 pumping stations altogether. 
Now let's look at an animation of the water distribution system, which will show you this huge network that carries water to almost every street. Remember how we talked about the system as arteries and veins? Now you see why. The ground under Prague is stuffed full of all kinds of lines and systems, and the water network is one of them. The biggest pipe of all is the primary feeder bringing water from the Shalivka water treatment plant, which is actually a 2.64 meter wide tunnel. This tunnel carries water from the Shalivka plant to the Yesenitsa reservoir. Another source which has supplied Prague with water for over 110 years is the Kareni water treatment plant. From Kareni, pipes take water both to the Flora underground reservoir in the center and a reservoir in the north of the city between the districts of Djablice and Kobilisi. The last source is water from the Voltava River, which is treated at the Podoli Waterworks. From these main distribution reservoirs, water is then sent on through thinner pipes to smaller reservoirs for distribution through water mains right down to the very smallest ones ending at supply points. What's a supply point? At supply points, we measure how much water is taken off from the public water system. Shall we take a look at a street, say Nerudova Street in Prague? I'm sure you know that one. Drinking water flows down to the street by gravity from the reservoir on Petrin Hill. And those lines on each side are the supply points, like branches going to the houses. After that, the water goes on through the customer's home supply pipes or the water supply system for bigger sites. And so we've reached the end. The tap, which you just turn on and water comes out. Simple, isn't it? But now we know that getting clean drinking water all the way there was far from easy. Including all their connections, the water pipes under Prague add up to almost 4,500 kilometers. That's enough to go from Prague to Brno and back 11 times over. And now consider that those pipes don't last forever. One day, they will all have to be replaced. We're at the Central Dispatch Center. Central Dispatch, i.e. a control room of control rooms. It is the place from which the water management system of the whole of Prague is managed. The room full of electronics monitors everything from the water treatment plants, how the drinking water flows in the water treatment plants through the water reservoirs to the water supply lines and then also the sewage network and wastewater treatment. As you can see, everything is fully automated, but there is also a human operator who supervises the process 24 hours a day, seven days a week, continuously and fluently. So, just like we all have water flowing from our taps. And when an accident occurs, its immediate removal and also the replacement supply of drinking water are controlled from here.